So growth and development. What is growth? Growth may be defined as a developmental increase in mass. In other words, it is a process that leads to increase in physical size of cell, tissues, organs or organisms as a whole. Growth refers to increase in size or number. Growth may be defined as the normal change in amount of living substance. These are all the multiple definitions given by multiple authors. Okay, so what okay. you have to do is when you tell growth, at least you have to remember two, like three, four definitions at least. And you should remember which person has given that definition. Okay. 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 So in this, you have to remember Prophet's definition, Moyer's definition. Okay, these two okay. are important. Okay. So growth refers to increase in size. So growth may be defined as a normal change in normal the amount change. of living substance. Okay. okay. Then okay. growth is an increase in the size of a living being or any of its parts occurring in the process of development. So in the process of development, there is increase in the size of the living being. So that increase in the size which happens due to developmental changes is called growth. So this was the definition given by Stedman. Then growth refers to increase in size given by Todd. This also you should remember. Growth signifies an increase, expansion or extension of any given tissue. So that was given by Pinkman. Okay. So then what is development? Development is increase in complexity. So here increase in size is called growth. So suppose you have a baby potato. So nurturing it with more of water and all that it is increasing in size. That is called growth. But that potato only if you have to increase in the function like the nutrition part, you put some fertilizers, pesticides and all that. That is called development. So there is difference between growth and development. Growth is external out external increase in size development is the internal increase in the capacity okay. okay then development is used to indicate an increase in skill and complexity of the function of a living organism development is in complexity given by profit the act or process of natural progression from a previous lower or embryonic stage to a later more complex or adult stage so that is given by Stedman. Development addresses the progressive evolution of a tissue. Okay, so you understood what is the big difference between growth and development? Yeah. Yeah. So correlating between growth and development, see growth is basically anatomic phenomenon and quantitative in nature. So it is just qu quantity. Mm. See a small child is becoming into a big adult. So yeah. increase in yeah. quantity. But development is basically physiologic, which happens inside. And it's qualitative. It is assessed based on the quality, okay. not on the quantity. Okay. okay. So this okay. is the correlation between growth and development. Growth is okay. anatomic phenomenon. Development is physiologic phenomenon. Yes, growth okay. is quantitative. Development is qualitative. Okay. Clear? Okay. What is the big difference between growth and development? Uh, growth is quantitative and uh, development okay. is qualitative. It's hmm. internal physical. Ah, internal? Yeah. Yeah, in um, physiological. Um, Physiologic phenomena is development. Anatomic phenomena is growth. Growth. Okay. okay. Then prenatal coming to prenatal development. So <laughs> here you have first, which is called as pre-implantation, embryonic, fetal, fetal. Sorry. <laughs> so what is pre-implantation? That is once when the sperm comes and hits the ovum, the sperm swims along the fallopian tubes and comes and hits the ovum and then there is a formation of like hits the egg which forms an mm. ovum and which goes and implants on the wall of the uterus. So that process mm. is called implantation. When the mm. ovum goes and implants on the wall of the uterus. Okay. 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 So the process before implantation that is when the sperm swims along the fallopian tube goes and hits the egg. So that process, everything is called as pre-implantation before implanting of the ovum on the wall of the uterus. uterus. Okay. Okay. Then coming to embryonic, that is the seven weeks. After okay. that, how the ovum forms the zygote, blastula, gastrula, modula, all that you have. Okay. 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 So all that is called embryonic development. Embryonic. And fatal is once all that zygote is formed and the cell division and all that takes place, then slowly, slowly organs start developing. So that is called as a fetal, fetal stage. Okay. So coming to pre-implantation. What is pre-implantation? 
initial stages of embryogenesis depicting mm. cell division so that is what one sperm comes and hits the egg so it forms mm. a fertilized ovum now right yeah so this ovum undergoes division a cleavage is formed where okay. it divides into two so then that multiplies into eight first is okay. one one to two two to eight eight to thirty two so this okay. division when it uh, multiplies from two to eight so that modular stage this phase where single ovum undergoes cleavage and forms two then that multiplies to form eight cell structure which is called modular till this stage this is called pre implantation period okay okay pre implantation up after approximately 3 days of fertilization cells of the embryo divide to form 16 cell modula okay so 2 4 16 okay okay so what is pre implantation period it is once the fertilized ovum undergoes the cell division it multiplies to form 16 cell modula in the span of 3 days post fertilization this okay. process is called pre implantation period okay 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 See modula again. It undergoes cell division, so it forms a blastocoel in the middle, surrounding by the cells, which is again called blastula. The so, modula uh, transforms into blastocyst containing a cavity called blastocoel. Okay. So yeah, what was it? No. Uh, so what? Uh, why was it said that thirty-two? Uh, it, it. Yeah, sixteen. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, what is the doubt? No, 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 no. I understood. Understood. Okay, fine. So now, initially, after the cleavage, four cells, sixteen cells, and the cells keep multiplying. Okay. Okay. So okay. now, what happens after this modular stage is reached? You will form a blastocoel. That is a seal of or a empty space in the middle, surrounded by the cells around. So okay. this empty space or the seal of, which is pleasant, is called blastocoel. Okay. And then the whole cell is called cyst. Blastocyst. Okay. Okay. Uh, cyst. What is cyst? Cyst is basically a hollow cavity lined by epithelium. Correct. Uh, may yeah. or may not be lined by epithelium. Yeah. So here, blastocyst. It has an empty space called blastocyst, which is lined by epithelium. Hence, this structure is called blastocyst. Cyst. Okay. 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 Yeah, I close this sentence. Then what happened? The inner mass cells, trophoblast, uterine decidia. What is uterine decidia? Uterine wall has three layers. Okay. okay. The the middlemost layer is the decidia. In the uterine wall, you have three layers. Okay. So okay. what they're trying to tell is, once the cells undergo division, there is a seal of the empty space surrounding by a lay, line line of cells, and in the side it has mass of cells where these cells only undergo further morpho differentiation and all that, and they give rise to formation of structures in the embryo. Okay. okay. So there's something called as chronic connection. So what is chronic connection? Okay. Chronic connection is nothing but see once it, it has to go and go get attached with that of the uterine wall. Okay. Yeah. So this attachment of the uterine wall of this fertilized ovum, there's a form of connection formed. Okay. Chronic okay. connection. So you have this chorion. You know the layers of egg. Yolk sac, chorion. You have heard about it? Yeah, I don't remember. Um, okay, there's one layer on the egg which is called a chorion. Okay. okay. So this from the yolk sac, behind yolk sac is the chorion. So now this is how the development takes place in the pre-implantation period. So after pre-implantation period, you have something called as embryonic period. Correct? Yeah. So in embryonic period, you have something called as pre-somite, which is 8 to 21 days; somite, which is 21 to 31 days; and post-somite, which is 32 to 56 days. So what happens in pre-somite period? An embryo in any stage of development, before the appearance of first pair of somites, that is segments, which in humans usually occur around 19 to 21 days after fertilization of the ovum. Okay, so you know until you are like almost see the fertilization is done, done the egg is implanted. So until then you won't even have a sign that you are pregnant. Basically, mm -hmm. in the general physiology, also I'm talking. Okay. So once it crosses four weeks, 
three to four weeks. Only then you will realize some changes happening in the body. So only then you will tell, okay, fine, something is happening. So I need to get it checked. So it's something like that. So that happens when this embryonic period starts. So in pre-implantation period, you will not know anything. So only once the embryonic period starts, you will get signs. Okay. So that happens usually at around 19 to 21 days. That is third week. Okay. So this is called the pre-somite period. Where the first pair of somites or the segments are formed. Okay. On the on 15th day, a groove called primitive streak appears on the surface, surface of the midline of the dorsal aspect of the ectoderm of the embryonic disc. By day 16, a primitive knot of cells called the Hensel's knot appears at the cephalic end of the primitive streak. This knot gives rise to cells that form the notochordal process. So here what they're telling, what is cephalic head? Cephalic end is nothing but the end of the egg where you're going to form the head. Uh. Cordal is the tail, cephalic is the head. Right? Uh, yeah. Okay, just remember like that. Cephalo is head, cordal uh. is tail. Uh. So basically cephalic end forms the head and the cordal uh. end forms the tail or whatever you call the leg. Uh. So basically, but initially it's the head and the tail. Okay. 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 So what you're trying to tell on the 15th day, you get a groove. You can see in the picture, a groove called primitive streak. Okay. In the midline, on the yeah. dorsum aspect, you have yeah. dorsum ventral, right, dorsal yeah. ventral. So dorsal is the topmost layer. Top, yeah. So along the top layer of that egg, what happens is you form a streak along the midline on the day 15. Okay. So that is the ectoderm, outermost. Outermost, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, right? Dorsum yeah. is the outermost layer, so it's the ectoderm forming. Yeah. So by day 16, a primitive knot of cells called the Henson's knot appear in the cephalic end of the primitive streak. Okay? Okay. So this knot gives rise to cell that forms a notochordal process. So what is notochord? Notochord is undeveloped spinal cord for human body. Okay. So that is when the structure initially starts to form, right? Yeah. That is why when you have a uh, embryo in the womb, it will always be like C-shaped. It will be always close together. But you'll have a notochord very prominent. Notochord is the spinal cord. So that is basically the framework forming for the embryo, developing embryo. Okay, so you understood this primitive streak, Henson's node? Yeah. And what are the cells giving rise to notochord? Uh, the cells of the Henson's uh, node. Henson's, yeah. They give rise to notochordal yeah. process. Okay. okay. So precordal plate. So before the notochord is formed, there's something called as precord. Okay. So this is a precordal plate. Precordal plate is an endodermal thickening, appears in mid cephalic region as a consequence of sonic hedgehog signaling. So that is why when you have See, all the pregnant women expecting or with the embryo, developing embryo, undergo ultrasonic scanning. Because all these cells have some sort of signaling towards the ultrasound, ultrasonic rays, waves. Okay, so this is called precordal plate. Precordal plate prefers the development of orofacial region, giving rise to endodermal layers of oropharyngeal membrane. So you should remember all this. It is believed to form head organizing function. So in complete notochord, you have the starting part. See here, they're given what is very prochondral plate. Yeah. So that forms the head region. Okay. 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 Primitive streak. The resultant bulge is called prime streak. Forms primitive from primitive streak. The rapidly proliferating tissues known as mesenchyme form intraembryonic mesoderm migrate in all air there between ectoderm and endoderm except at sites of oropharyngeal membrane. Appearance of mesoderm converts the bilamellar disc into trilamellar disc. So here what they're trying to tell is see after this prochordal plate where you have the head forming thing, head forming cells proliferation. The next you have one more thing which is called as prab. In that primitive streak only you have a prab. So this is a specific region on that primitive streak what happens is an excessive proliferation of cells in this region. 
Okay. So okay. because of excessive proliferation of cells, these cells are called as mesenchyme, mesenchymal cells. Okay. See, mesenchymal cells are always not differentiated. There are okay. they are pluripotent cells. That means based on the requirement of the body, they can be differentiated into any form of cells. Okay. Hence, the mesenchymal cells are always called pluripotent cells. Okay. 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 So here, these mesenchymal cells they get differentiated into oropharyngeal membrane. Oh, they get differentiated into bilamellar and trilamellar disc, which further forms the head region. Okay. Few regions of the head and neck. So okay. it is basically an undifferentiated cell or pluripotent cells. Okay. See, always in cell life, you have the inner endoderm, you have the middle mesenchyme or mesoderm. And you have the outer ectoderm. Ectoderm. Okay. Right. Okay. So here you can see there's primitive streak where there's excessive proliferation of cells. Then you have the outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, inner mm -hmm. endoderm. Endoderm. Okay. Okay. So coming to neural tube. Okay, this is very, very, very important because from here on the structures start developing when and where. Okay. So. Development of ectoderm into its cutaneous and neural positions occurs at 20 days by infolding a neural plate ectoderm at the midline forming neural folds. These are called neural grooves. So in the down region, you can see how the cells undergo grooving. You can see in this picture, you can see how they're grooved. Yeah. What is this question? What I've showed in the picture, you tell me. Hmm? Hello. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, tell me. Telencephalon, dancephalon, mesencephalon, metrocephalon, myencephalon, spinal cord. What is that? Um, okay. Yeah. In the brain, yeah. the brain, you have something called as forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. Okay. And the posterior most part of the hindbrain is called dancephalon. Correct? Yeah. So this brain itself continues as spinal cord. Right? Yeah. No, are you sure? No, I, I don't remember all those things. Okay. Okay, okay. fine. Now, the basic thing. Okay, always remember. Brain mm -hmm. itself develops a spinal cord when it crosses mm -hmm. foramen magnum. You know foramen magnum, right? At the base of the skull. Mm -hmm. In the case yeah, of the yeah. occipital you have a big foramen through yeah. which the brain continues down a spinal cord. Yeah. Okay. So that is okay. what they're trying to tell in this okay. picture. Okay. okay. So okay. this is the brain and the spinal cord is nothing but it controls all the neural system of the human body. Correct? Mm -hmm. Sympathetic nerves, parasympathetic mm -hmm. nerves, where are all these attached? To the yeah. spinal cord. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. At these you can recall sympathetic nerve system, parasympathetic nerve system, yeah. and all that. Yeah, okay. but. Um. Huh. Okay. So, because of this, there is something called as neural folds, and okay. these itself gives rise to multiple organ formation. Okay. okay. So, what happens to these germ layers, which are the germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and mesoderm endoderm? And germ layers. So ectodermal cells will give rise to nervous system, epidermis and its appendages, that is the hair, nails, sebaceous gland and sweat gland, the epithelium lining the oral cavity, nasal cavity and sinuses, a part of intraoral glands and the enamel of the teeth. So all these are formed by the ectodermal cells or the ectoderm. The endodermal cells will form the epithelial lining of gastrointestinal tract and all the associated organs. So, what are the associated organs? Either esophagus, yes. then again, now after the esophagus, you have a stomach, then you have liver, then you have pancreas, then you have large intestine, then you have small intestine, then you have rectum, then you have anus. So, all these are lined by endodermal cells. Whereas you have the nervous system, then you have the skin, hair, nails, sebaceous glands, then sinus, nasal sinus, then cavities, enamel of the teeth. All these are lined by ectoderm. 
ectoderm. Then mesoderm will give rise to muscles. Of all the structures and connective that form connective tissue like bone, <laughs> cartilage, blood vessels, <laughs> dentin, peritoneal ligament. Okay, so in the okay. tooth only enamel is formed by ectoderm. Rest all is formed by mesoderm. Okay. Okay. The okay. embryonic disc will soon become altered by bends and folds necessary for further development. Okay. 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 So they have something called a stomodium now. What is stomodium? It's a mouth. See, because the mouth is completely developed, there is a small kind of opening. Mm -hmm. That is called stomodium. stomodium. Okay. So okay. there, this opening itself gives rise to something called a frontonasal process, medial nasal process, lateral nasal process. All these processes used together to form the nose, the mouth, lip, tongue, all of these. Okay. So this membrane is devoid of mesoderm. So stomodium doesn't have mesoderm. Mesoderm. Yeah. Being formed by opposition of stomodial ectoderm with the foregut and endoderm. At the end of third week, it disappears and thus a communication is established between mouth and the future pharynx. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's something called a frontonasal process which mm -hmm. develops from the mesoderm, proliferates downward projection. So you can see in the picture, it's downward projected. Okay. Yeah. It's downward projected, right? Yeah, yeah. See, see, in this down picture, it's more clear. See, this yellow one is the frontonasal process. Mm -hmm. Okay. The blue one is the lateral nasal process. Okay. And then the yellow big one divides into two. So that division part is called the medial nasal process. Frontal okay. nasal process it itself divides to two medial nasal process and the medial nasal process is surrounded by lateral nasal yeah, okay. process. Okay, okay you have okay. this uh, yellow orange one which is the maxillary prominence and you have the black one which is the mandibular prominence. Okay. 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 So coming to somite period, when the buccopharyngeal membrane breaks down at the fourth week, the foregut communicates with the external through the stomodium. A series of mesodermal thickenings in the wall of the cranial, most part of the foregut pharyngeal branch, brachial arches. In the interval between any two adjoining arches, the endoderm extends outward to form an endodermal pouch. To meet the ectoderm, it dips into this interval as an ectodermal cleft. So here what they're trying to tell, because we don't have mesoderm in stomodium, the ectoderm comes in direct contact with the endoderm, right? Uh, uh, can you explain in that? In, in, yeah, in stomodium, I told you there is no mesoderm. Meso correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now this ectoderm directly comes in contact with the endoderm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So how does it come in contact? The endoderm extends outward to form an endodermal pouch to meet the ectoderm. So okay. due to absence of mesoderm, the endoderm itself comes outside and forms a pouch like of pouch like of structure to touch the ectoderm, which is ectoderm. outside. Yeah. So this pouch is called endodermal pouch. Okay. okay, this makes a cleft in the ectoderm. So it's called endodermal pouch and ectodermal cleft. Okay. 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 Then coming to pharyngeal arches. Developing pharyngeal arches that appear in the fourth and fifth week of development. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, my period, you have an ecto endodermal epithelium, mm -hmm. pharyngeal pouch, artery, nerve, cartilage. What are the structures of pharyngeal arches? What is not developed? But I'll tell you what arch gives rise to what. Okay. Mm -hmm. The neural crest cells that originate in the neuroectoderm of the forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain migrate ventrally into the pharyngeal pouch. That is okay. what I'm trying to tell you. The brain, I told you, it has forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. Okay. Then yeah. diaphragm, which crosses the foramen magnum and continues the spinal cord. Okay. 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 So coming to the central or categorization of portions of the central nervous system. You have something called a central nervous system. You have something called a peripheral nervous system. Okay. okay. So central nervous system, you have something called as rhombencephalon, prosencephalon. In the picture, you can see, right? Yeah. Prosencephalon is the forebrain, 
Rhombus cephalon is the hind brain. There are the different names for that. Fore brain, okay. hind brain is called prostate cephalon and rhombus cephalon. So, okay. so rhombus cephalon is the hind brain. Okay. It can be subdivided into various number of transversal swelling called rhombomeres. In human okay. embryo, eight rhombomeres can be distinguished from caudal to rostral, R7 to R1, and the isthmus. Okay, so here, hind brain is further divided into eight segments. Okay, okay. that is what they're trying to tell. Eight segments, which is RH7 to RH1. Okay. Prosencephalon or the forebrain is the rostral most position of the brain. That is the front most position. Initial position of the brain is called rostral portion of the brain. And crescent cephalon or the forebrain is the most anterior most position in the brain. Okay. okay. The crescent cephalon, the mesencephalon, and the rhombus cephalon are the three primary positions of the brain during early development of central nervous system. Okay. Okay. See, central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. Okay. okay. So here, what they're trying to tell you is the crescent cephalon. Mesencephalon, rhombus cephalon is a forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. Hind. Are the three important portions of the brain during early development. Mm. Peripheral nervous system, you have all these sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves. Mm. So coming to derivatives, which pharyngeal arch you see in this picture you can see the first pouch is the first pharyngeal arch. Second is the second pharyngeal arch, third is the third, fourth, and sixth. Okay. 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 You can see here, right, in the picture, what is the yeah, first yeah, pharyngeal arch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we'll see which arch gives rise to what organ formation. Okay. okay. <clears throat> the first pharyngeal arch, which is also called as maxillary arch, gives rise to trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve is the fifth. Fifth uh, cranial nerve. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember all the cranial nerves? How many cranial nerves are there? Mm, I don't remember all those, but um... hello. There are twelve cranial nerves. Okay, yeah. Huh? And thirty-two yeah. pairs of spinal nerves. Yeah. Okay. So twelve cranial nerves. They are. What are the 12 cranial nerves? Optic. Okay, fine. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. okay, let's yeah. not confuse you more about yeah. it. So just remember, fifth cranial nerve is trigeminal nerve. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So first pharyngeal nerve gives rise to trigeminal nerve. Okay. okay. And okay. it gives us the muscles of mastication. MOM meaning muscles of mastication. Okay. Then in skeletal part, it gives us the mandible. Maxilla, incus, malleus. This incus and malleus are the bones yeah. in the ear. And then it gives rise to maxillary arch. Oh. Maxillary arch gives rise to trigeminal nerve, muscles of mastication, Muscle. mandible, maxilla, mandible. incus, malleus, then maxillary arch. Then coming to hyoid, second pharyngeal arch or hyoid arch. It gives rise to facial nerve, muscles of facial expression, then stapes, stylar process, lesser corner of hyoid bone, and the upper part of the body of hyoid. In hyoid bone, you have something called a greater corner or lesser corner. Okay. So this hyoid arch gives rise to lesser corner of the hyoid bone and the body of the hyoid bone along with stapes, stylar process. Okay. okay. 